Hello everyone. Welcome back. I'm Stephanie Haney. I have your latest update related to the COVID-19 coronavirus here in the state of Ohio. At 2 p.m. every day, the Ohio Department of Health releases the updated numbers about confirmed cases here in the state of Ohio. So I have those numbers for you and I'll get into those for you in just a moment. Just a reminder that we do this every weekday morning at 11 a.m and every afternoon at 2 p.m. as soon as those numbers come out. We try to get you this information as quickly as possible before Governor Mike DeWine gets underway with his press conference, which is typically at 2 p.m. each day. These are the latest numbers that we now have from the Ohio Department of Health. A significant number of increase in positive tests. There are now 2,199 confirmed COVID-19 coronavirus cases here in the state of Ohio. As a reminder, Dr. Amy Acton, the director of the Ohio Department of Health, has said that the cases are likely much more widespread than that, but because we haven't had the testing capacity in order to test all of the people who could be tested for COVID-19 coronavirus, we simply just don't have the numbers matching up with the actual number of cases in the state of Ohio. But as of right now, we know for sure that there are 2,199 confirmed cases of COVID-19 coronavirus in the state of Ohio. There are now 585 hospitalizations related to the illness, and a total of 198 of those patients are in the intensive care unit. The deaths have also increased substantially since yesterday. Yesterday at 2 p.m. there were 39 deaths. Today there are 55. So a total of 55 deaths confirmed between yesterday and today related to the COVID-19 coronavirus here in Ohio. The age range impacted has also ticked up a little bit less than one year old at the youngest and then we also have now someone at least one person who is 99 years old that has tested positive for the coronavirus here in ohio the median age remains 53 and the split between males and females who are testing positive based on the data that we currently have is 49 percent men and 51 percent women also developing right now there are Berea firefighters and ems members who have tested positive for covid 19 coronavirus that includes a total of six firefighters and EMS workers. A representative has said that they are in self-quarantine and are being closely monitored. So that story is developing. We'll bring you more details on that in all of our broadcasts and on our digital platforms as we get in for more information about that. Now for some updates for people who are looking for some help here in the state of Ohio. We know many people have been hit very hard by business closures here in Ohio, and the Ohio Department of Jobs and Family Services is trying to help by giving people a step-by-step -step guide on how to file for unemployment here in the state of Ohio. Now, there's been a lot of confusion. People have been having a lot of trouble with filing online, specifically getting through on the phone lines. It's been difficult to get through on the phone lines. The website is unemployment.ohio.gov. That is the website where you apply, and it's also the website where the step-by-step -step guide is there. Now, here's the issue with that, though. A lot of people have been having a hard time accessing that website. It's been crashing, or it's been slow. You know that there have been millions of people across the country filing for unemployment over the past weeks. We had 3.3 million just apply last week, which was a record, a considerable record, up from less than a quarter of a million being the previous record before that in a single week. But in order to help combat that, the Ohio Department of Jobs and Family Services has increased their user capacity on the website. So the capacity previously was 1,200 simultaneous users. Now it's 24,000 simultaneous users. But do remember this, even if you are having a hard time getting through, stay with it because your benefits are retroactive to the day that you became eligible to apply for those unemployment benefits. So that means even if you can't get through for days, even if it's a week until you can get through, but you became eligible today, you'll get benefits dating back to today when you do eventually get through. Also keep in mind that independent contractors will also be eligible for unemployment benefits under the new CARES Act that was recently passed. That's that $2.2 trillion economic stimulus bill that President Donald Trump signed. So keep that in mind as well. A lot of people who weren't previously eligible for unemployment now eligible so are there are going to be a lot of people using that step-by-step -step guide going to that website to file for those benefits now if you are still working and you think that maybe you shouldn't be if you're working at a business that you think 
isn't quite essential under the stay-at-home order, which went into effect last Monday at 11.59 p.m. There are steps that you can take. There's been some confusion about this as well. There was some talk that you shouldn't report to your local police, but then there was some talk that you can report to your local police. I talked with organizations yesterday. Here is the preferred method. The best course of action is to report any potential violations of that stay-at-home order, which again, it's being called the stay-at-home order, but that is also the same order that closed non-essential businesses here in the state of Ohio. So if you think that a business is in violation of that, you need to report it to your local public health officials. So that's going to be your city board of health potentially your county board of health in an area that doesn't have an individual city board of health, but your most local public health officials. We do have a story up on WKYC.com and our WKYC app, which I put together that lays it all out for you. And there's a link there that you put in your address and it tells you who your most local public health officials are. And the reason that you're going to want to report to your public health officials is because Yes, you can report to the police, but if you do report to the police, they'll be going out, they'll be filing a police report, and what they're going to do with that is they're going to give it to your local public health officials because those are the people who are in charge of enforcing this. And when I talked to local public health officials, they told me that their first course of action is going to be to educate and hopefully correct any issues that might be having people in violation of that order. But beyond that, they do have the authority to close a business if a business is not complying with that order, if it doesn't have a feasible justification for considering itself to be an essential business, it is on the business to come up with that rationale, that justification for considering themselves an essential business. If they don't have that or if they're not following the proper safety protocol, if they're not giving their employees enough space to stay at least six feet apart and so on, then they do have the authority to close that business. And then, only if necessary, if needed, will they enlist law enforcement in order to help enforce that act? And if it does get to that level, it is a second degree misdemeanor to be in violation of that stay at home order. That means 90 days of jail time and that also means a $750 fine. You could get one or the other or you could get both if you're a business order that's not complying with that stay at home order. So keep that in mind. A lot of people also wanting to know what's going on with our primary election here in Ohio. It was decided that the primary has been extended to April 28th, so Cuyahoga County has now put a plan in place for that. We all know that it is now going to be absentee ballot only, so mail-in ballot only to get your vote in. So in Cuyahoga County, the Board of Election will accept requests for mail-in ballots via their website, which is 443vote.us. Again, that's 443vote.us. You can also request a mail-in ballot by phone. That's 216-443-VOTE. Again, that's 216-443-VOTE. Or if necessary, you can visit the Board of Elections Administration Office in Cleveland if you absolutely have to, if it's essential for you to pick up your mail-in ballot in person at the Board of Elections. Some other national news that we want to share right now. New York City has successfully opened up the Javits Convention Center as a temporary hospital. So that space will have 1,000 beds and it'll be used to help New York City with its overflow of COVID-19 coronavirus cases. The hospital itself was announced to the public by New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, but just started seeing patients today. So the first patients have, are now being seen at the Javits Convention Center in New York City. So here in Ohio, this is something that's also being discussed as we prepare and make sure that we don't overwhelm our healthcare system as we expect that peak to come. Dr. Amy Acton now saying the peak in new positive cases could come in Ohio as early as mid-April. So some of the sites that are being considered here in Ohio include the IX Center here in the greater Cleveland area, also the Columbus Convention Center, and the Duke Center in Cincinnati as temporary hospitals if necessary. Another thing to mention today, yesterday was National Doctor Day. That's when we celebrate our healthcare professionals. Lots of people sending out beautiful tributes. Governor Mike DeWine put together a tribute for Dr. Amy Acton, who is always the first to remind us all that she has an incredible team working behind her as she's become the face of us fighting the COVID-19 coronavirus and the frontline workers here in the state of Ohio. Today is also Equal Pay Day, and there's a little bit of, of a 
I think maybe some confusion around equal pay day when they just see the hashtag out there. So just wanted to take this time to sort of remind everyone that equal pay day is not actually a holiday. What equal pay day symbolizes is the day that a woman would have to work to in the new year, this year being 2020, in order to make the same amount of money that a man would have to work to make the same amount of money in the same exact job in the previous year. So a man makes a certain amount of money in the year 2019 for doing one job. A woman doing the same job has to work all of 2019 and through to today, March 31st, to make the exact same amount of money that the man made just in the year 2019 alone. So that's the point of Equal Pay Day is raising awareness about that also a great time to point out that this does include doctors, nurses, medical care workers. There is no profession that is immune from this and it's even later in the year for women of color. So keep that in mind today as you're on social media and we're all celebrating all the people who are taking good care of us today here in the US. Okay, that's our latest update for you related to the COVID-19 coronavirus here in Ohio. Governor Mike DeWine's press conference is underway. You can check that out on our Facebook page and our YouTube page and also on 3 News. And we will see you in our broadcast tonight. I'll see you all at 5 p.m. on What's New.